Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garropy. In this video, I wanted to share a tool that I use to add CSS animations to the Web Dev Weekly website. If you don't know, Web Dev Weekly is the podcast that I co-host with Richard Gottlieber. Now this website is brand new, it's not done yet, but I wanted to make a drop down navigation and I wanted it to animate down and back up. Let me show you what I implemented. If you click the hamburger menu, you'll see it slides down from the top. When you close it, it slides up. Now, to accomplish this, I'm using conditional rendering in React. And regular CSS can animate these transitions, but only if the element is in the DOM. Because I'm using conditional rendering, the actual navigation element is removed from the DOM uh, when you close this navigation. And so, I needed to look for another library that gracefully handles enter and exit animations in React. And I found Framer Motion. It's totally perfect for this. It's very, very easy to create enter and exit animations with this, along with a ton of other animations. Um, it does drag animations, scroll animations, and it can even animate between two components. So I'm going to show you and a much simpler example how to implement this. And so here's what we have right now, just a button that says hide and show, and this is conditionally rendering this box. And I'll show you how to install Frame Remotion and get its animate on enter and exit. So let's pop over into VS Code. And this is really what we're working with. We've got a state for if the thing is shown or not, and a button that just toggles that state and if it's supposed to be shown, we render this box. So let's go ahead and get started. We will install Framer Motion first. And then we can go ahead and import it here. We want to bring in the motion component from Framer Motion. And so this is very similar to styled components if you've ever used that. Instead of using a regular old div here, we're going to use a motion.div. Very similar to style components where you would do a style.div if you wanted to create a, like a React component that had CSS and JS baked into it. So we've got our motion div. And in this case, now we can add in the special props that Framer allows that will show our initial state our animatable state and how to transition through them. Uh, so I'll type those out initial. And this is going to be an object. And the animation that I kind of want is like, I want it to start small, grow up and fade in all at the same time. So initially I want to start at uh, shifted 50% in the Y direction. A positive Y is down on the screen. I also want an opacity of zero, so it's going to start where you can't actually see it. And a scale of 0 0.5, so it's going to start a little bit smaller. So now we've defined our initial state. If we actually run the app, uh, you're not actually going to be able to see this now because the initial opacity is zero and we haven't told it to go anywhere else after that. There you go. So now it's gone, right? But technically it's, it's still here. It's just... Um, a zero opacity. So now let's tell it where to animate to. It looks like GitHub Copilot is giving us some suggestions and that's perfect. We want it to animate to its regular position, Y of zero, right where it's supposed to be, um, opacity of one, so uh, not transparent, and scale of one. Look at that. Already on enter, we have an animation. I refresh the page and you'll see it grows and fades in. But what if we wanted to change this a little bit? Uh, let's say we wanted to change the duration. I like it pretty snappy, 0 0.2. And then you can also change the ease. I actually like ease out. Uh, this will kind of just, just be able to change the speed at which it animates and with what kind of curves. So it looks slightly different, a little bit quicker. Now, what we haven't done is the exit animation. 
Uh, in order to do exit animations, Framer needs a couple more things. Uh, because this is React, we need a parent component to actually watch this motion.div and sit above it to say, hey, when this is supposed to get unmounted from the DOM, you know, this parent component kind of needs to say, hold on, wait a second, don't unmount this from the DOM until I say you can, because I know how long the animation is going to take. So what we need to do there is bring in the animate presence component, and that's what we're going to wrap this with. So if you want exit animations, you add the animate presence component around it. And so now this is going to delay unmounting on any child motion components until animations are done. And we also need to add one more prop on this called a key. And let's just call this the box. Uh, every, every child component that you want animate presence to track needs to have a unique key. This is how it identifies, you know, which thing it has to wait for while the animation is running. So let's go back. So this is working. Our enter animation is working. Let's go ahead and add our exit animation. Now to do this, it's very simple. You add exit. And I'd like to do this slightly different than the initial one. Uh, let's do no scaling on this. So it's just going to slide down again. And so see now it, it animates on enter and on exit. But what if we wanted like the timing on the exit to just be a little bit faster, right? On, on enter, it's kind of cool that we see it coming in. But when we hide something, we're just like, I don't care. I want it out. You can define specifically a transition in the exit and it's the exact same thing it's just the object and we'll make the duration 0 0.1 so it's going to be just like really fast so you see how it comes in a little bit slower and exits much quicker now that's because this transition property is the default transition uh, everything will use these values unless specified otherwise in specific you know, animate, exit, initial, things like that. Now, I know this is getting a little bit crazy. There's a lot of like objects and things here. And what if we wanted to clean this up a little bit? Well, here's what we could do. What if we ripped out all of this stuff and we put it in a constant that we called box animation? Box animation is just an object. And then now we're going to have to convert all these to object properties. So if I just grab all the equals and change them to colons, uh, remove all of the double curly braces from the former JSX syntax. Now we got to put commas after everything. Now we have a regular old object. That defines this box animation and what we can do with this is we can spread those props into motion.div and so now you can actually define your uh, properties as objects and maybe even functions that return an object let's say if you want a different key for them you could make this like a function that took in a key or something like that which spits out an object that can be spread into the motion.div Let's make sure this is still working. There you go. Enter and exit animations are a little bit different. Now, there's still a ton to learn in Framer Motion. Uh, the stuff that they can do based on scroll, all the different drag and drop events that they do, and touch and tap events. You can respond with animations to all those. And what's really interesting to me is ordering multiple animations at a time. Like if you have a list and you delete one thing and you like ripple animate everything to, to come up. So there's definitely a lot of learning and orchestration that I still have left to do. But for this Web Dev Weekly drop down navigation, this was perfect. So thank you so much for watching this video about Framer Motion and how I used it to enhance the Web Dev Weekly website with some animations. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.